Have you ever cheated before, like on a homework or your taxes or on a partner? Have you ever clicked the dislike button on one of my videos? If you said no to those things, how could I determine whether you're telling the truth? In this video, we're going to talk about a wonderful piece of mathematics called the Bayesian Truth Serum. And the Bayesian Truth Serum is going to let me figure out who's lying and who's telling the truth. My thanks once again to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. More about them at the end of the video. As a professor, I really want to know how many of my students are cheating on their homework. Cheating on homework is actually a multi-billion dollar industry, particularly in the online era. One of the worst types is called contract cheating. And this is where you just pay somebody else to write your homework for you and you don't put any thought in at all. Personally, I've never seen the point, like I assign homework to my students as an opportunity to practice so that they do well on the final exam, which is worth much, much more. And so cheating just seems like you're robbing yourself of that opportunity to learn. But regardless, I still want to know how bad is this cheating? Now, there have been many different studies that just ask people, they put out a server and they say, did you cheat on your homework? And the numbers who sort of readily admit that they cheated is relatively low, a number like say 2%. But maybe just asking somebody whether they are going to cheat doesn't give you the true answer because sometimes people lie. And so this Australian study did something kind of interesting. They applied the Bayesian truth serum when they tried to figure out how many people were cheating. Here's the big idea. On a normal survey, you might ask a question like this. Have you ever paid somebody to do your homework for you? But then in the Bayesian truth serum, we add a little twist and we also ask the following question. What percentage of students do you think will have paid somebody to cheat on their homework? That is, you're asking two questions. One, did you do it? And secondly, what percentage do you think other people did it? And the idea here is we're going to look at that guess of the percentage to try and figure out whether you're lying or telling the truth about the original question. The way we're going to do this is use something called an I-score. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to give everybody some number of points for every question. And then we're going to offer them a cash reward. We're going to pay them money based on how truthful the answers are according to the algorithm that I'm going to show you in a little bit. And what this means is that all the participants have a massive incentive to try and tell the truth to get the most amount of points and thus the most money. Telling the truth is thus aligned with the incentive of getting some money. So what is an I-score? Well, an I-score for a particular answer to a particular question is the logarithm of the following ratio. The answer's actual relative frequency, like how common it is that people said, yes, I cheated, or no, I did not cheat, divided out by the mean of the predicted frequency. Technically, this is the geometric mean here, but basically what we're dividing out by is the population's prediction for how the question is going to be answered. I'll remind you that logarithm gives a positive number if its input is greater than one, and it gives a negative number if its input is less than one. So the real question is, when you look at this ratio, is this ratio bigger than one or smaller than one? Which dominates, the actual frequency or the predicted frequency? So what does an I-score really measure? It measures something called surprisingly common answers. Imagine that the population predicts that, say, 10% of people will have done some, you know, morally nefarious behavior. But if in actuality 20% admit that they've done this behavior, then this is the logarithm, well, 20% divided by 10% logarithm of two, you get a positive number. That is, this is surprisingly common in the sense that more people actually do it than people predict it. So the direct thing that an I-score measures is surprisingly common answers. And so if you're trying to get the most money and thus you want to have the highest I-score, you should be trying to answer in a way that lets you find these surprisingly common answers. So what does a surprisingly common answer have to do with telling the truth or lying? Because that's what we're really trying to get out of this. The argument here is going to rest on a psychological bias, which is that you are more likely to think that a particular behavior is common if you yourself do it. Like if you're somebody who cheats on your taxes, you probably think more people cheat on the taxes. You're probably like, everybody cheats on the taxes. It's not a big deal if I do it. If, however, you don't cheat on the taxes, you might be like, well, I don't want to cheat on the taxes. Nobody would cheat on their taxes. The prediction about how common it is 
is connected to whether you yourself do it. And this is true for anything. It doesn't have to be for something sort of morally dubious. You could say, which type of sport do you prefer? Well, people who prefer basketball might think that the preference of basketball is more common than it truly is. One way to think about this is using Bayesian analysis. This is a conditional probability, the probability of A given B. That vertical bar means given B. And the big idea of Bayesian analysis here is that when you learn new information about the world, you update your probability. So previously you might have just believed that there was a probability that A was true, but now you believe the probability is A is true given this new piece of information, B. And there's a whole theorem of Bayes' theorem, I've talked a lot about this in previous videos, that give you exact formulas to be able to update your probabilities when you get new information. But here where we're just talking about a psychological bias, the idea is just that when you get this new data point that you actually engage in a particular behavior, it's likely that it's going to increase the probability that you rate that behavior as common. That is, to state our assumption in terms of conditional probabilities, I'd say the probability that you think many people cheat given that you cheated is bigger than the probability that you think many people cheat given that you don't cheat. The information about whether you cheat or not affects these probabilities. Okay, so now let's imagine you're trying to get that highest I score possible. You don't care about telling the truth. You don't care about lying. You're just in it for that score. So you go and you honestly make your prediction about how common a particular action is. Say you think it's 20% of the population that would do it. But if you reflect on what everyone else is going to think, those that don't do that particular action, you're just going to assume, based on what we talked about, that they're going to think it's less common than you did. If you thought that, say, 20% of the population did it, that's your best idea, given your information that you have where you do it, your estimate of what other people who don't do it is going to be something less than that, perhaps 15%. And if you're correct, if your best analysis here is correct, then you're going to have a surprisingly common answer where the actual frequency will be 20% and the predicted frequency will be something lower than that. So you should tell the truth. You should say, yes, I did this, or no, I didn't, whatever you specifically believe because you're going to believe that your action is going to be a surprisingly common answer because those that chose different from you are going to have the psychological bias and their estimates of the probabilities are going to be smaller. Okay, so that's the big idea. You should tell the truth if you want to get a big I score and thus get a lot of money. But does this actually work? Well, in that Australian study that we were talking about before, we were asking how many people do contract cheating where you pay somebody else to write your homework for you. Well, they actually gave out the surveys to two different groups of people. In one group, they just gave a normal survey and they said, did you use contract cheating? In the other, they used the Bayesian truth theorem. And what they found was that people who took the Bayesian truth theorem one were 2.46 times more likely to come clean and admit that yes, they had done this contract cheating. However, the study went on from there because even if this larger number admitted it, it might be the case that people were still lying on the survey, still unwilling to tell the truth. Perhaps they were worried about it not actually being anonymous, even though the survey was. Perhaps they didn't appreciate the like intrusion onto a very personal and private matter. And there's this weird psychological effect where people have a self-concept of themselves and they try to maintain that concept. So like, we all probably think we're like, we're good people doing good things. And, and maybe sometimes we like almost lie to ourselves about our own actions to keep up that narrative that we're a good person. These types of things can be studied in the literature, but the point is there's a reason to believe that perhaps the number was quite a bit larger than even the Bayesian truth serum is, that, that it got some people to admit the truth, but maybe not all of them. So then what the study did was it said, well, we have all these predictions. We have these predictions about the relative frequency. So why don't I create a new number? It uses the actual uh, admission rate, how many people said they were willing to do that, as well as the predictions about other people and a little bit more data, and comes together to combine with a larger number of 7.9% being likely that they actually admitted in this contract cheating. Almost four times more than just asking in a normal survey, did you do this, which was about 2%. So the Bayesian truth serum, it's pretty cool, but I do want to be clear that this doesn't mean I can figure out an individual person. This is about figuring out a collective rate over a large number of people because, I mean, just because you do something, you could still, you know, believe that a very, very low portion of people actually did that. 
even if you're less likely to believe that than somebody who didn't engage in the actual action. I could use Bayes' theorem with the different estimates that we have that we've collected from our data here to make a probabilistic guess that if you believed that these types of unethical behaviors were really common but still said you didn't do it, that maybe you're a little bit more likely to actually have been lying and actually to have done it nevertheless. Now, if you are interested in actually getting better at mathematics, I highly recommend today's sponsor, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform with an enormous number of courses in mathematics, statistics, and much more. For example, you can learn more about Bayes' theorem that we talked about in this video in their pathway on courses about probability and statistics. As a professor, what I really appreciate about Brilliant is how they design their courses to be incredibly interactive so that you are in the driver's seat learning the mathematics actively. In their statistics courses, for instance, you aren't just told what a sample mean is, you get to actually play around and visualize what is happening. And then you can practice and assess your knowledge and get feedback on whether you learned the content. Crucial ideas in statistics like the central limit theorem or confidence intervals are all just so delightfully interactive. I'm actually often a little bit pessimistic about learning online, even including my own videos, just because so often people are just passively sitting back watching some instructor perform mathematics. My belief is that to really master mathematics, you have to be actively engaged in your own learning. And that is why I am so proud to be sponsored by Brilliant. So go to brilliant.org slash Trevor Bassett and sign up for free or the first 200 people to hit the link down below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. If you have any questions about this video, please do leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.